Now, last pass. I uh, I think I found out about last pass from this show. I think somebody wrote a note. I've used RoboForm, which was Windows only. I think they're doing a Mac client. And I've also on the Mac used one password, which was Windows, uh, rather Mac only. But then when I found LastPass, first of all, it's very affordable. It's There's a good free version, and a buck a month, you get some ad- additional features. A buck a month. And it works on everything that I use, including all of my portable devices, the iPad, the iPhone, the Android systems, Blackberries. So I, you know, I fell in love with this. But I'm not you, Steve. And I just trust it. I had to say, well, I trust that they're doing it right. It looks like they're doing it right. But I'm very glad that we're going to get this. We're going to find out. The Steve Gibson checkout. Okay. So one thing I want to do in this podcast is I'm I'm going to go against something that we've done in the past, which is to rely heavily upon previous podcasts. Okay. Uh, for for the, for explaining the crypto stuff, um, I'm going to uh, c- I'm not going to assume any prior knowledge. We're not going to go into the depth that we have before. So people who want to follow up, who will like say, well, I want to actually understand how some of these things that Steve talked about actually work. We've covered all of this in the past. So so that's all there. Um, but I don't want to assume that someone listening to this remembers all of that. So on the crypto stuff, uh, th- there'll be a little bit of redundancy that way, but not a painful amount of it. Um, because, and the reason I say this is understanding the architecture uh, that these guys developed is the key to understanding why it's safe to trust them, why I trust them, and why I've completely switched my entire solution for managing passwords after spending days researching it and testing it and playing with it over to LastPass, which I have. So let's step back a little bit and look at and and understand what the problem is we're trying to solve. Um, the very early episodes of this podcast, nearly five years ago, we spent several episodes talking about passwords, personal password policies, and you know the, the whole issue. And you know the password is the sort of the original security technology. I mean, back dating from the early days of Unix machines, which were the first machines on networks, it became important, became crucial, necessary to to identify users. And so the idea was you'd have a username and you'd have a password. The idea being that the username was something everyone knew. It was public but the password was something only you knew. And, you know, we've talked about what it takes, you know, the whole problem of managing passwords. The problem is that all other things being secure, that is assuming that a system of some sort, whatever it is, doesn't have any other security problems. If it's password-based, then the one vulnerability is guessing the password. That is, if you know someone's username, you can think, okay, I mean, you know, and we've seen this in movies and things. It's like, okay, let's see, what might their password be? Well, I know the name of their kids. Let's try that. I know mm-hmm. the name of the dog and their parents. And <laughs> the dog is they, what they, happened uh, to Paris Hilton. Everybody yes. knew her dog's name. Right. Yes. Not a good password no. to use for that reason. So, <laughs> so, the problem is that the vulnerability is guessing the password. In fact, remember that just last week we talked about the FBI and the Brazilian government both failing after years of trying to crack the TrueCrypt encryption of someone whose drives they had acquired, who was a suspected money launderer. They spent years using a dictionary attack where they had a dictionary of words that they just kept trying. Well, that was brute force password guessing that the this person whose drives these were was smart enough to use a password not in the dictionary. Had it been a simple dictionary-based word, he, his security would have been cracked that way. So, so the idea is 
you want a password that that isn't going to be guessable, that isn't in the dictionary. Well, the other thing you need is something if it's so so we'll, we'll call it gibberish. You know, it's 32x5707 or something. Just gibberish. Now the problem is it needs to be long because the next attack on a gibberish password is to try every possible combination of gibberish. You know, you start with A, then you do, don't use A. That's a bad password, by the way. That's, what, that's the <laughs> first one. You, that's, the, that's the other first or, one you or try. Or Z, because sometimes they try the backwards one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and even if, you, even if you did Z, but they started at A, that's only going to take them 26 that's tries. That's a good point. Yeah. So, a, so anything A through Z, bad. Bad. <laughs> yeah. And then you go A, 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 B, A, C, A, D, and so on. And so now, if, you, if it's a two-character password, and if, assuming it was all, for example, lowercase, well, then it's going to be 26 squared, and we can still try that many in a short time. So the point is that it is possible in many s- scenarios to try every possible password. Now, every possible password gets to be many pretty quickly. But what that means is, the longer your password is, the stronger it is because every character you add, say that we have the characters lowercase a through z, that gives us 26 possible characters in the so-called alphabet. Um, then if, say we had then uppercase a through z and that it, these, these passwords are case sensitive, meaning that it matters whether it's an uppercase a or lowercase a. So now, so before we had 26, lowercase. Now we add 26, uppercase. So we're to 52. Now if we add the digits, 0 through 9, we're at 62. And say that we just add two more special characters, plus and minus. That is, we, we allow a plus symbol or a minus symbol. Well, that gets it to 64. Well, 64 is a special number because that's 2 to the power of 6 which is to say it's the same as six bits of password strength. So using just the alphabet and the digits, plus a couple more characters, we get six bits of strength per character, which is to say 64 possible combinations for a single character. For two characters, that's 64 times 64, because we have all of the possible characters with 64, and then then 64 of those first characters for all the, the second characters. And if we add three characters, it's 64 times more, and the fourth character, 64 times more. Well, if you start multiplying 64s, this gets to be a very big number very quickly. So the point is that computers are fast. and Who knows whether the FBI actually started trying gibberish? Maybe they did. But if it was sufficiently long gibberish, you just can't try them all. Well, how many years did they try it? Well, they tried for many years. I think it was two years. Two years, if they have fast systems, is a billions and billions of attempts. Attempts, yes. Although um, systems are also, and I think TrueCrypt being a well-designed system, the other thing that that systems will do. And I know, for example, that WPA, the good encryption for Wi-Fi does this, is that the actual, the actual algorithm for turning a password into a key is itself complicated. So I I don't remember, I think it's 4,096 iterations of some cryptographic functions that WPA goes through. So a single attempt d- takes a while, but not long. It's short enough that we don't notice it. But it, it, what it means is that, that many, 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 many attempts is scaled up by a deliberate increase in the complexity of the algorithm that gets the key from the password. And and I would be surprised if TrueCrypt hadn't done the same thing. So that meant it was infeasible. That is to say, yes, you can try lots of passwords, but each one is expensive in it's computational take you a while. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. in computational time. And that's a deliberate overhead 
added in, you know, by good security people who want to prevent this kind of brute force, just try every possible combination of gibberish. So, so what we've done is in, in here in the last 10 minutes, we've walked through the problem, 